Hey everybody, we've got some more hope to read. So let's just get straight into it because it's so great. The children's school was situated between the formation school and the water centre. The last was a large construction where Hope's people went for received their daily portion of potable water. We arrived at the wall of the school and started to paint. Trash was making a naked, nasty woman. Celine did a beautiful beach. Jade did the symbol of Hunger Games. <laughs> and me and Kona were working on a group of eagles. Luckily, the kids weren't outside because it was lesson time, so we were doing that in complete peace and calm. After an hour, Trash picked up a sandwich for every of us for lunch. We ate happily until the students of the School of Formation came out for a break. We hid because if the teachers had discovered us, we could be in danger. Lai saw us and greeted us from afar. I smiled and exchanged and Trash moved the hand very slowly. When they finished, we came out from the dumpster where we hid and moved to the park. The park was a bad copy of one of the green areas of the old cities of Earth, but it sucked. There were a plenty of flowers for the oxygen, some benches, toys for kids, and a digital signboard with the rules of the zone. On a slide, there were two kids, and on a benches, there was a granny. <laughs> she looked us very bad, probably because we weren't at school. We sat on the ground and we started to talk, while the granny and the two kids were leaving annoyed by our cigarette smoke. We spent all the afternoon there, and at the sunset we decided to spend the night at Trash's house for the rave party. I was very excited. Trash's house was situated in the middle of the Square of the Hanged. That wasn't the real name, but the place was very famous for the executions of the useless. While we were walking, Celine asked me, Do you really want to come at the rave party with those tatters? What is wrong with them? I shouted. You look like an undertaker. Oh, come on, Celine. If my mother finds out about our walk... I insist. She laughed. You need a boyfriend. Go to your house and change yourself. You're an idiot, I answered, smiling. What about you? Iris asked her. I, I, I've no idea who anyone is. I'm struggling. Meh, my mum is too drunk right now and daddy is at work. I will take the first sexy thing that I find in the wardrobe and I'll wear it. And you, Iris? I won't come. What? But you love Trash's parties, I said. I've got a bad feeling. I'll pass the evening reading. That book was a cup of hot sham milk. After that, she took her first crossroads to her house. That was the last time I saw her. I came back to my house. This one was one of the regular apartments of Hope. They looked like bunkers of no more four floors made of grey, cold stone. I entered in my house, who was situated at the first floor. When I opened the door, my mother faced me in a demonic way. Sarah, where have you been all day? She asked me furiously. At school, mum. Should I believe you, little liar? She looked my shoulders. Where's your bag? I just need my ears for listen. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh yeah, that's great. She smelled me. Did you... just... smoked? Mum, please. You have been with those tramps again, she yelled. Mama, they're my friends. No, they're junkies, especially... that... Conal. He's a good boy. <laughs> He's a useless darling. He survives rubbing our food, our clothes, our potable water. It's Anne Hope's fault. He was just a kid when he arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He lives in an air duct. How can you call him human? Mum, he's a poor boy. He's a rat. She face palmed herself. Just look what we have done for you, Sarah. We pay the bills. We have a home. We work. How can you not appreciate this? We are just lucky. After that, I went to my room while my mother was crying in our grey and sad kitchen. Let me describe her. She was a fat woman with curly blonde hair and green eyes. She was always depressed or tired since I was a kid, and she didn't smile always. Maybe because she was one of the people who saw the earth die, and she left her home very young. Anyway, I was angry with her. <laughs> my crew wasn't a group of street rats. I opened my wardrobe to pick up my only sexy dress. This voice isn't really fitting for what's happening, but... This was black, long and tight. Perfect for me. I wore my heels and my favourite necklace, the one with the skull on it. Ooh, edgy. I loosed my ponytail and... I was ready. I went downstairs. My mum was cooking something taken from the daily portion of food. Something with a bad smell. Just where do you think you're going? She asked. I'm going at Trash's house. 
I'll be at home after midnight. Good luck. I went outside in the freeze evening breeze. I walked to the square and I entered in his house. Both of his parents were drunk and they were singing happily with other people. There were a lot of teenagers who were celebrating, dancing, drinking, smoking and having sex. Trash was making it out with Celine on the table of the kitchen, so I didn't disturb them. Lai was drinking a coupe of sangria, and he smiled to me from the stairs. Iris was flirting with a girl with black, smooth hair with steampunk clothes, so she didn't see me. But in the darkest corner of the room with a glass of beer, there was Kono. His white hair were covering his eyes, and his dirty clothes were making him look like a zombie. I stared at him and I said, Hey Ko, how's going? <laughs> Not bad. Remember that stuff that I found today? Yes. Looks like someone is using it. He showed me a couple of boys who were smoking weed on the metal. Put it as a hammock. Do you want some? He put it in my hand. A little red candy. It's a berry. I stole it from the mayor. <laughs> Thanks. I smiled and then I ate the candy. After some minutes, Conal got drunk and he fell asleep. I went upstairs looking for the bathroom because I needed to throw up. I found the WC and I started. But at my shoulders, someone closed the door and stared at me. It was Shane. A friend of Lai. Hey, you need that too, Shane? He didn't answer. He kneeled down in front of me and he froze me with his hands. I understood what he was going to do. I tried to stop him, but he was too strong and on LSD effects. I kicked the air and I tried to scream, but he stopped my mouth with his hand and he tried to put my bra and t-shirt off. I punched him in the face after I hit him with a shampoo bottle made of glass. But I... but I accidentally... hit the temple. He was dead. I called him. I tried to wake him up. I started to cry. I screamed. I could hear the robo-police siren because Shane's chip signaled his death by not natural causes. I thought I was already dead. But then, Conal arrived and shocked me. Sarah, what the fuck is just happened? He screamed. Shane! I pointed his dead body on the floor. Gosh. God. They're coming here. The chip. They will find you. He took my hand. Follow me. We went downstairs and we went out by the back door while the robo-police was entering. Wow, this just got really dramatic and kind of scary. Right, I'm just going to crudely insert this wherever it is at the end of the video, whatever. Sorry, my voice is really fucked at the moment because i got some weird throat thing going on, but uh... Either which way, I got a message, a private message on DeviantArt the other day. Well, basically from the original writer of Hope herself. She sent me a message and you can predict, or at least assume what the message might have said, but uh, unlike someone like uh, long-term fans might recognize Minor Elite, who lost their mind last time, this lady actually said in the message that she enjoyed the video and found it funny, and now she's a fan of the channel. So I just wanted to, s I think it's important to say how fucking refreshing that is for someone to have a sense of humor about it i mean i tried my best to sort of hide who, who wrote it originally unlike with the minor elite thing which i handled quite poorly just putting his name everywhere and everything and links to it in the description and this one i sort of tried to hide a bit more but it's just really awesome that she saw that it was you know just for fun just for have a, a laugh for the shits and giggles as some might say so i just want to give her a little shout out and just say thank you for being awesome. Proving that not everyone on the internet is a fucking whiny child. Anyway, back to my pre-recorded thing from like two weeks ago, where my voice isn't fucked. Right, so that's that's the end of Cap 2. Just super exciting. Man, I can't hold in my excitement. Still don't really have any clue what's going on, but a little bit funny at times. So what was your favourite part? I think it just keeps getting better and better. Right, I just can't believe it. Anyway, so as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Make sure you check out the other episode and more videos for more crazy content. I'll see you next time. Bye!